There you are, the Discovery Channel. As you travel through the Annapolis Valley, you soon begin to realize you're seeing crows everywhere. You see them out in farmers' fields, you see them in river estuaries, and down here in the tidal flats. Not many, but during the day, that's where you'll find them. Perhaps searching cornfields like this one for leftover grain. They seem to be traveling around in small groups and seldom in large numbers. What you are seeing is the tip of an avian iceberg. By late afternoon, you begin to notice something interesting. The birds seem to be gathering together and flying all in one direction. And the groups are getting larger and larger. By dusk, huge flocks of crows are streaming in towards the town of Kentville. About five years ago, the birds chose downtown Kentville as the best place to spend their long winter nights. For the last two winters, some 30,000 crows have been added to the town's population. For the crows, moving into town for the night was a sensible decision. They're free from hunters, the street lights help to deter predators, and it's a little warmer in town. But the nightly arrival of 30,000 crows was not greeted with nearly the same level of enthusiasm as that enjoyed by the wintering bald eagles. For the residents, the constant racket as the birds swarmed into their roosts each night and the rain of droppings on cars and rooftops was soon pushing their endurance to the limit. Just imagine looking out of your window every evening and seeing this river of birds passing over. An exciting spectacle for visitors, but barely tolerable for those who had to live near or under the crow roosts. When we arrived in Kentville, the newspaper headlines told the story and echoed the town's frustration. Clearly, something had to be done. The solution came in the form of a small device called the Phoenix Whaler. The job of persuading 30,000 crows to leave Kentville had fallen to the town's administrator, Bill Boyd, and to the Department of Natural Resources. In his search for a humane solution, Bill looked into every conceivable device on the market for scaring birds. But he would settle on the Phoenix Whaler. It's easy to operate and you can program it like a VCR, setting it to come on at different times, day or night. Here's how it works. The whaler, with extension speakers, is placed where birds are being a problem. Then, alarm calls and predator calls are played at programmed intervals. At Kentville, this really stirred up the crows. But the message had to be reinforced with a shotgun. And after a few birds were killed while the whaler played alarm calls, the crows were convinced the danger was real, and finally they moved out to the edge of town. Intrigued by the Phoenix whaler, we drove to Truro to meet the man who makes it. Bruce Blacklock raises sheep on his farm beside this tidal inlet. He's managed to combine his love for sheep farming with the manufacture of a high-tech piece of equipment that is customized and programmed to solve bird problems all over the world. But it didn't start with birds. It all began when Bruce was losing sheep to coyotes at his first farm. I had a sheep farm in uh, Nova Scotia here, and in the summertime we were running six or seven hundred ewes on lambs, and uh, coyotes became a problem, and uh, I calculated at one point we were losing, or coyotes were costing us between twelve and thirteen thousand dollars a year. I tried everything. I had guard donkeys, I trapped, I snared, I had electric fences, but nothing seemed to deter these very intelligent coyotes. 
While searching for answers to these coyotes, Bruce bought the rights to the Phoenix Whaler from an English company. Then he set one up, playing electronic noises in the sheep pasture. With a coyote, you have a very cautious animal. They come to the tree line and look out into an open space. They're going to think two or three times before they move out, in, out of cover. If there's something that's sitting in the middle of the field that looks and sounds like a bit like a, a UFO, going off 24 hours a day, every four minutes with a different sound, they will choose discretion and turn around and go somewhere else. And that's all it is. It's creating a zone that they're not comfortable in. And uh, eventually the, we found the sheep would, would bed up right underneath the whaler and uh, the coyotes would stay away. The whaler is designed to accept electronically programmed computer chips that play back a recipe of predator calls, distress calls, and electronic sounds aimed at those species of birds causing a problem in different circumstances, perhaps for protecting cornfields or fruit crops. This is a crow prom with the American crow alarm call, distress call, red-tailed hawk and eagle. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is go through and pro I programmed a group of eight on the screen here. I can program eight different sounds into a, into a group. And then now when I press this, this will... The system is now programmed for red-winged blackbirds. And red-winged blackbirds love sweet corn doing considerable damage by tearing open the ears to get at the succulent grain inside. We can have it come, the sounds come out in any order, any duration, any interval, and we can, we can spread the sound around. We can spread the sound around through a number of speakers. For instance, we can go a thousand feet in four directions using eight different speakers. The sounds will bounce around between those speakers. For instance, we can have a red-tailed hawk sound from one speaker followed a thousand feet away by the red-winged blackbird's alarm call and out of another speaker will come the distress call. What we're trying to do is create a zone that the birds are uncomfortable. Um, so if, if, they, if they recognize that there's a hawk here somewhere, they can't see it, but it's enough to put them off. And, and uh, hopefully they'll go somewhere else. Usually they do. Bird strikes on aircraft are a dangerous problem. Bruce Blacklock has created programs to keep birds away from runways. For scaring gulls, it's a combination of their own distress calls with predator calls and electronic sounds. June 1993, Canadian Airlines 737 taking off out of Calgary, heading to Vancouver with 50 people on board, uh, roaring down the runway on takeoff, and all of a sudden there's a big flock of gulls sitting on the runway. The plane ingested, as far as they can tell, between 50 and 60 of these seagulls into both jets. One jet was disabled immediately, the other was, was um, damaged. The, the, it was too late for the pilot to abort the takeoff, so he con completed his takeoff on one damaged jet, circled around and landed immediately. There was no, no injuries, um, but as I understand it, the damage to that plane was about $4 million. Bruce is now getting calls for help from all over the world. He calls this the Marine Whaler. It's designed to float on open water, to keep birds away from oil spills or from fish farming operations. It's a humane solution that helps birds stay out of trouble.
The marine whaler sits out in the water, emitting sounds at random intervals from all of its speakers. And that keeps the birds away. Come on, good dog. So what began for Bruce Blacklock as a problem with coyotes has grown into a business for helping others solve their wildlife problems. And he's still here with his sheep, where the coyotes now fear to tread. <laughs>